justice for all. Roll call. <clears throat> Mr. DePiro? Here. Ms. Grignani? Is, uh, is going to be uh, absent today. She had a death in the family, so she will not be joining us. Um, Ms. Uh, McCarthy? Here. Ms. Peterson? Here. Mr. DePiro? I did ask. Sorry, I just I'm a little here. off today. Again. Um, Still here. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Um, also in attendance are Mayor Hold Michael Soriano. Oh, I did not call you. You called me. Okay, so uh, so to be very honest, the reason I'm off is I forgot the recording equipment was off, so <laughs> that's what threw me off. <laughs> Uh, Council President Cariffi? Here. Okay. Also in attendance are Mayor Michael Soriano, Business Administrator Keith Kazmark, CFO Ann Cucci, uh, Township Attorney Jim Lott, and Township Clerk Colette Madden. <coughs> Council President, we have a quorum. You may begin. Thank you. Upcoming meetings, October 15th, 7 p.m., regular meeting. November 12th, 7 p.m., agenda meeting. Approval of minutes, agenda meeting July 2nd, regular meeting July 16th, agenda meeting August 5th, regular meeting September 17th. Presentations, reports, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Council President. This uh, coming Sunday at one o'clock on Minnehaha and Beverwick Road will be our second annual Italian Culture and Food Festival. So please come on out and join us. There, uh, it was a lot of fun last year. The uh, our staff has worked very hard and is working very hard to make sure it's even better this year. We're going to grow this event organically over the next couple of years and uh, just see where it takes us. It, it won't become the San Gennaro Festival overnight, but uh, it'll become something that's ours here in Parsippany. Um, second, that um, our recent street festival, our, our fall festival, was a resounding success. I'd like to thank uh, everyone involved with making that happen, the staff at uh, Parks Forestry and Recreation, the Parsippany Troy Hills Police Department, our first responders, including rescue and recovery, and uh, the ambulance squads, uh, professional and and uh, a, a volunteer as well. I want to thank them so much for everything they did, including the CERT team uh, being available, uh, as well as all of the people that came out to make it a resounding success. The weather was perfect, maybe a couple of degrees higher, but you'll have to talk to someone else with more power than anyone here in this room will have, all right? But uh, thank you so much uh, for being a part of that. Um, next thing I have is that uh, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And um, I'd like to tip the hat to um, Mayor James Barbario for making sure that this is something that was always recognized within the township. And uh, that, that's something that uh, Mayor Barbario and I always saw eye to eye on when it came to uh, that. And um, I'd like to read this into the record. This proclamation, whereas October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is an annual campaign to increase awareness of this disease, and while we have seen an increase in mammography rates and a decline in deaths, there is more we can do. And whereas the National Breast Cancer Awareness Month remains dedicated to increasing public knowledge about the importance of early detection of breast cancer diagnosis and treatment, and whereas too many women do not utilize mammography, at regular intervals, even though research indicates it is best available method of detection to decrease death rates. And whereas, the awareness campaign is sending out several key messages. Most notably, the American Cancer Society continues to advise women to get an annual mammogram screening once they reach age 40. And whereas, the National Cancer Institute estimates in the United States that more than 268,000 women and 2,670 men new cases of breast cancer will be diagnosed this year and over 41,760 people will die. And whereas in Morris County, female breast cancer accounts for 15.8% of all cancers and 9% of all cancer deaths. Now, therefore I, Michael Soriano, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the township of Parsippany Troy Hills, do hereby proclaim the month October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month and I ask our citizens to be aware of the importance of early detection, our best protection at the risks of breast cancer. Um, last, for uh, my report, we've, uh, I'm sure some of you have heard about um, some plans and designs that, uh, that have been, you know, put together about the Booton Reservoir. 
And uh, tonight, I'd like to have a public presentation for, for you by the Open Space Institute, has, who has spearheaded this project from the beginning. Um, there will not be a question and answer session after the presentation. However, you may ask questions during the public comment when it comes to the Booten Reservoir. Okay? So please come on up, introduce yourselves, and uh, please address the public. Yes, you should, yes, please. Mm -hmm. For it, it, everything needs to be on the record, so it needs to be in the microphone. I, I, I tend to walk around. Is that okay? You can walk That's around. Right. That's no problem. Uh, good evening, everyone, uh, and we are here to hear from you. So, if, if uh, after the presentation you do have comments, please please feel free to come and, and make comments. Uh, my name is Frank Pinto. With me is Ben Spinelli and Genevieve Torino. We are with a company called Greener by Design, who was hired by the Open Space Institute to prepare what's called a property management plan. So, what we're going to do is walk you through what the plan is and give you a little taste of what we see as, as, the, uh, as the project once it, once it goes into, in, into development and actually becomes open to the public. Uh, as I'm sure residents of Parsippany know, this is, uh, the property has not been, uh, you haven't been permitted on the property for a very long period of time. Uh, so now we're going to have very limited public access, but what we feel will be just a tremendous project and an, an incredible asset to both Parsippany and the town of Booton. So uh, we'll walk you through some of the, this is an overview of what we'll be talking about this evening. Um, and I'll try to be as respectful to your, to the council's time as possible. There's a, a, just a tremendous history with the Booton Reservoir, as, as many of you probably know. Uh, the old town of Booton is under the water. First, let's get this out of the way. There is not a church steeple that shows up when the water level gets low. There's always been that myth. There, there are still some uh, um, foundations and some old stone rows from the farms that were under there. Most of the property before it was acquired by Jersey City was owned by Morris County and was the county poor farm. So before, before there was a, uh, a, an adoption and a foster system, uh, if you were an abandoned child, you were basically sent to the poor farm and you worked for you were a ward of the state, and you you earned your you earned your food uh, by working on the farm. Uh, there were other privately run farms under the under the Jersey City Reservoir, and we've seen a a, a lot of really neat pictures of, of the history. Uh, right here, what you see is some of the the dam uh, under construction. Uh, another thing that we learned along the way with this project was the dam is called a Cyclopean Dam, which basically means that uh, it, it's constructed in a dry laid stone fashion, very similar to the pyramids in Egypt. Uh, so it, it is somehow it's, it's, it's waterproof. Uh, I guess they, they did a lot of things to do that, but it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenally laid and constructed structure. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it's quite, quite, the, uh, quite the impressive structure and one that also needs to be protected for, uh, to ensure Jersey City's water supply is safe. Uh, what you see here is an historic photo from the 1930s of a bridge that crossed the spillway. Uh, this is, if you were on Green Bank Road and were looking at the spillway dam in that area, there was a bridge there. Part of this project is restoring a pedestrian bridge across that spillway. It's kind of a key component to m enabling an entire loop trail around the reservoir. And what we're talking about will be a, a, about a 7.7 mile loop trail for pedestrian access only. Uh, so, some of the features that uh, uh, will be on, on, the, on the trail, it'll primarily be a, a natural surface. Um, some of you, if you trespassed on the property along the eastern shore, will know that there is a, an existing uh, gravel road. That will be improved somewhat with additional gravel, but that will be the only uh, surface that will be improved uh, around the entire trail, around the entire reservoir property. So, uh, go ahead, advance. Uh, it's envisioned that the project would be developed in four phases. The four phases you can see in the different colors, phase one being green, uh, extending from Green Bank Drive and the, and the dam structure southward all the way along and at the, at the foot or at the base of the dike along Route 46 and terminating along the entrance road to 287. All of it is going to be on the Jersey City property inside that fence line. Uh, the, uh, that phase is the most mileage. It's also the simplest to construct. 
uh, and would probably require the least permitting from DEP to, to, to get it underway. Uh, the next phase would be in, in powder blue, which would be in the town of Booton as well as in, in Parsippany Troy Hills uh, along the uh, Parsippany Boulevard Reservoir Tavern area. Um, you can see in the three P's on the screen, two of them along Green Bank Road and one along Parsippany Boulevard. The primary, the, the thought being that uh, these are locations that are easily publicly accessible. They are on Jersey City property. They're not in a close location to any dense uh, residential neighborhoods, which might cause some uh, overflow parking issues, and they're not near any schools. Uh, the, the one along the western shore on Parsippany Boulevard, Route 202, is uh, almost across the, the, the street from the uh, Reservoir Tavern. If you drive along there, you may see a very cleared grass to field area that was, it's about a half acre area that was set aside when the county built the new Washington, Washington Street uh, Bridge crossing of the Rockaway River. That was a staging area for all the construction equipment. The Park Commission at that time, probably 15 years ago now, the Morris County Park Commission, realized that that would be a good area for a parking area if we ever got public access uh, to the reservoir property. So, that's, I just point that out as that's how long this project has been thought. Uh, it's, it's been, uh, I think, five mayors is the way that the Park Commission describes it, five Jersey City mayors to try and negotiate and get this uh, public access done. We're two months away from making it happen. So keep your fingers crossed, and we, we hope we can uh, bring it to conclusion um, at the end of this year. The, uh, the three public the parking areas, as I mentioned, two are along Green Bank Road. Uh, and the other along Parsippany Boulevard. Uh, the, the two along Green Bank Road, we uh, initially uh, located that, uh, one parking area on the west side of Green Bank Road. Uh, New Jersey Dam Safety, which, which is within DEP, said there's no damn way you're gonna put it there uh, for, for, for uh, security reasons. Uh, and their thought was it's just too close to the, to the, to the dam infrastructure. So we are locating it east of, of Green Bank Road, which is a, a safer location from, from, a, from a, a Homeland Security perspective. Now, um, the, what, what we envision as the parking areas, we're, we're, it's trying to be designed, since this is a primary drinking source for about a half a million Jersey City residents, is to use as little impervious coverage as possible and to also capture any storm water that, that, that is uh, uh, generated by the gravel parking lots. The centers are being designed with what are called bioswales, so that would catch a lot of the first flush runoff from any, from any environmental contaminants during a, during a storm. Um, if you've ever been to Duke Farms down in, in Hillsboro and, you, and you're in that parking lot, it'll, it'll, it'll look uh, and have a lot of the same character as that, that facility. Uh, these, these two are along Green Bank Road uh, or Green Bank Drive, depending on which which online map service you're using. Um, the, uh, these two are, are roughly going to hold about 20 cars each. Uh, they're, the only real uh, asphalt will be for the handicap accessible parking areas. Uh, the, the map on the left is the southern portion. Uh, this is, both of these are before the big 90 degree turn uh, on Greenback Road. Uh, the, the southern one, um, is located right next to an existing driveway that serves the Jersey City uh, infrastructure for all of their water treatment facilities. And the one on the right is, is right on the edge of the Jersey City property and uh, immediately next to the RVRSA um, treatment buildings. Uh, both are located exactly across the street from what will be a trailhead. The trailheads will have a, um, a removable bollard. That basically means the public will be allowed to get in on foot, uh, but if there's an emergency, the bollard can be removed and uh, a police vehicle can, can access. Uh, I'll get to some of the security features that we'll have in, a, in, in just a minute. Uh, there is, like I said, a lot of tremendous history with the property. Uh, our, our property management plan is online. If you go to the Jersey City Environmental Commission website, you can download a copy or view it online, and you can read a lot of the great history that Genevieve put together uh, uh, that, that speaks to uh, everything going back to the Native Americans that um, lived around uh, the reservoir property. The part of the 
uh, sales pitch, if you will, to Jersey City is what is in what is in this for our residents? Why why is Jersey City even allowing this? Um, nearly every every uh, reservoir in New Jersey does have some form of public access. Almost every reservoir has quite a bit more public access than what we're proposing. All that said, we still want to offer Jersey City some incentives for saying yes. So part of that is making some water quality and environmental improvements on their land, as well as uh, to help uh, the stormwater that enters their property. So part of what, we, what will be in the plan and what the Morris County Park Commission will carry out with their lease from uh, Jersey City is doing some of these deer management measures and uh, water quality improvements to, uh, to really make some measurable, we hope measurable improvement to the quality of the water in the reservoir. There's 8 billion gallons, is it? 8 billion gallons of water in that reservoir and it's a 155 mile watershed. The improvements that we can do on site will likely have a de minimis impact on water quality. But it'll, it, something is better than nothing. So, so there, there's a committed effort to making some improvements to the water quality going into the reservoir. And uh, these are some of the methods that, that will be used to, to, to help uh, do that. Uh, the, the Great Swamp Watershed Association has kind of expanded its, its reach and uh, will be doing water quality testing on, on the reservoir property to see, in particular, if we can improve the water quality coming off of 287. During, uh, during our research of this project, uh, we looked at a lot of Google Maps and did a lot of other mapping and actually found some piping that goes right from the highway under the water into the into the reservoir, mm -hmm. and uh, it's you know there's nothing we can do to treat that before it gets there, but there are a number of stream channels that are highly eroded along the west shore that uh, we can we can do some measures. We can slow down the water volume as well as velocity, and then trap all of those sediments before it gets into the water body. So there will be some marked improvements. Part of, a, part of the plan also will be some wayfinding and some storytelling to really tell the public about what we're, what we're doing here and, and, and benefits that we're, we're making to the, to the, to the reservoir. Um, these, these are very difficult to interpret, <laughs> but the, these are some of the designs of, of what, will, uh, what will occur uh, along the uh, western shore in particular, but also along the eastern shore. Go ahead. Uh, I did mention already that uh, we were developing a partnership with the Great Swamp Watershed Association. Uh, there is existing water testing that's being done by Suez, who is the operator of the reservoir for the city. Um, but what we're looking in particular for, for additional water testing to, to really see if there, we, we can make some improvements to, to water quality for, for the Jersey City residents. With this public access comes all of these opportunities for, for educational programs and for volunteer efforts and for, for, for scouting groups to get out there. So they're, they're, I, I think once people start to see this property, see the beauty of it, uh, the, the ideas are going to start to flow. The, the one that immediately comes to my mind is 10K running clubs th that are going to be out there Saturday mornings. It's, it, I, 10K is roughly about eight miles. Mm -mm. So 6.4, but who's six, counting? 6.4? Six uh, nobody's counting. <laughs> Good. I knew, actually, it was more than, I knew it was more than 5K. It's actually 6.2. Okay. Six point, no, 5K is 3.2. Yeah. Sorry. You can tell them, that, you can tell them not a runner. But, uh, running the wrong distance this whole time. But you, you'll, have, you'll have running clubs <laughs> that are going to want to do their morning loop, you know, eight mile run around the reservoir. It's going to be beautiful and, it, and it's, it's going to be rewarding. Pretty much flat, but there are going to be some hills involved with, you know, if you just know the contour of that property. Um, but one of the things also that we discovered, uh, Jersey City built an entire building, a, a lab, for water testing. And as soon as they built it, they decided to basically outsource the, the management of the, of the reservoir. And it's been sitting vacant for years. So there's a huge opportunity for the Jersey City school system to, to do on-site uh, science days. Uh, all kinds of different environmental initiatives and, 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 and local educational programs can be worked into that as well. So it, we're, we're, you know, we really feel like once we get that gate open and the public are out there, all kinds of other benefits are going to come out of this project. So it's, it's 
it's, it's, a, it's an exciting time that we're, that we're at with this, with this project. Um, these are some schematics of what we see or envision as, as features along the way. The western shore um, and the eastern shore have just incredible views. Uh, so there, there are several spots that uh, the, the Open Space Institute sees as real opportunities for, for philanthropy and sponsorship of stone benches and, and, uh, and uh, a, a blind to, to watch the blue heron on the island. Um, Punchins will be needed to cross some of the wetlands, but every effort will be made to minimize any kind of disturbance to the land and the ecosystem as possible. And these, this is a, a, a cross section of what one of the boardwalk sections would look like. Um, and uh, the, for the most part, this is what, what will happen. It will basically be just a clearing of brush, if there is brush. Virtually no trees will be removed in order to create the trail in its natural state. Uh, along the Booton side of the, of the property, RVRSA already has a, a, a sewer line running through it, and it has basically a cleared road along the, along the North Shore. So it's, it's, the trail is there. It's just really a matter of allowing the public and supposed to trespassers to use it. Uh, emergency response is, is, this is where we started with this project. We, we knew we couldn't do any type of design work or come up with any kind of proposals until we check with anyone and everyone involved with security. So uh, Chief Miller has been fantastic, and, and uh, Jay Wieners, the OEM coordinator you have, really helped us develop the, the emergency response plan for the property. So that, that their work is directly incorporated into the, into the, into the plan. Uh, and basically, uh, keep in mind, the Morris County Park Commission has its own park police force. They will, they will have jurisdiction as well as Parsippany and Booton police on response all depending on where a call is made. So we've, we've been working with the local police on that. The other security issues that we've, uh, we've, we really need to address is all of the infrastructure. So the, the basic plan for that, and I'll show some mapping uh, in, in just a second, is to fence off the public from anywhere that is considered a critical piece of infrastructure. There's a no way do we want to enhance or provide an opportunity for any anybody to do any harm at, at the dam structure and the dike structure. Either one of those are, are, are critical pieces for, for the water supply in Jersey City. So we, we've met with uh, a, a lot of, of agencies to make sure that we aren't proposing anything that will be of offense. And uh, we did end up hosting a meeting with all of the people in the room at the same time, which uh, I, was, I couldn't believe we actually got that scheduled in a matter of a couple of weeks. But everybody wanted to make sure they were at the table and, and got their say. Uh, and it was, everything we were proposing is, is meeting with their criteria. So we were very happy about that. Um, the, as I pointed out, the, the really the points of access, there's only gonna be four public points of access. The two off of Green Bank Road, the one off of the parking area on Persephone Boulevard, and the last one will be on the north side of the bridge along Washington Street. Uh, th at that uh, what now is a cul-de-sac that was created when the new bridge uh, was constructed. That will be uh, an access in Booton. Th those are the four public access points. There are numerous gates all around the property where, where, the, where the local police will have access, where, where I understand now they do not have any, any access to the property. And trespassers know that. So part of, the, part of the project is the more eyes that you have on the property, the cleaner and the more reporting you will have as a result. And that's not my opinion, that really comes from, from uh, public safety officials. They're the ones that, the more eyes you have on it, the, the, the safer it will be and the cleaner it will be. And the, the Morris County Park Commission, I think it's 300 miles of trails that they maintain, they see it. That's exactly their experience whenever they, they have uh, public access along a trail. So um, these are some of the views of, uh, from the property. I hope you get out, uh, you're able to get out there soon and enjoy them the way we, we've been doing on our site visits. Um, and it will be a dawn to dusk operation. It'll be in keeping with uh, all the other county parks, no night activities, virtually no, I don't think there's any plan for lighting at all uh, in any of the parking areas even, because it will be a dawn to dusk. They'll be operated just like any other of the county parks. Um, this. This is the view you would 
you would get, maybe not quite as close, uh, of, the, of the spillway structure. If you've ever been there, it's just a tremendous uh, experience to be in front of this wall of water. It's, uh, it's, it's quite spectacular. Um, what were, these are some photos of the, the spillway crossing. And the, the photo on the right is an existing bridge uh, abutment. We don't know if it's engineeringly sound for a new pedestrian bridge. We're talking about probably a 120 foot long bridge to cross that spillway. Um, we still need to go to DEP and uh, dam safety and everybody else for approvals. So it'll be designed to their specifications. Uh, one of the other things I didn't mention about security is if there is ever a homeland security uh, uh, risk level uh, rise, the facility would just be closed. And that, that decision will be made by Suez, Jersey City, and the Park Commission. The Park Commission will basically say, Jersey City doesn't want it open, then it'll be closed for the day. So that's just uh, better safe than sorry is going to be the attitude. Will, will the Park Commission be able to tell Jersey City we're closing it down? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that yes. Works they, both if, ways. Correct. Okay. If, there, if there's some need that the Park Commission has to close it, yeah. Or, or what about if Chief Miller Persephone deems they need it, they want it closed for a particular he, reason? He would talk to Chief Gabe at the Park Commission, okay. and then they would say, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think uh, the Park Commission is going to go against the desire of the No, I, I, I just so, wanted him to have the authority to yeah. be able to do that as well. Yeah. Yeah, if, there, if there's some risk, you know, a, a safety issue, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the two maps uh, that you see, the one on the left is, is of the, the main reservoir structure on Green Bank Road. Um, in red uh, is what will be the new fencing that will be constructed to keep the general public away from all of the critical infrastructure around the dam. Uh, you can see the P's for the two parking areas. And uh, in powder blue are basically access points or gates. Uh, there needs to be some gates for the functioning of the, of the reservoir by Suez and Jersey City. So that's why you see those at the ends of the, uh, the dike and the dam. Um, the, it, on, on the right, you'll see uh, a red square. Please know that's not the scale. That is uh, a sec security shed. Part of the, the security measures will be two or three security sheds where basically uh, response <coughs> ATVs will be kept. So anyone that would need to be uh, excavated on a stretcher, that all of that equipment will be stored on site. So the response time will be, will be very quick. Access would be right off of a gate, an existing gate on Route 46. The, um, I think I mentioned, um, if you just go back to the map for a second. Uh, on Route 46, we're, we're not permitted to be on the top of the dike wall with, with the public. It's, it's a fantastic walk if you get to do it. Uh, Route 46, you know, if you're on Route 46, you don't see anything. That, that office building across the street, they have a tremendous view. But the, the, the general public, so, so one of the suggestions was a viewing tower along Route 46 so that you could see it. Um, so we'll, we'll see if that's possible and, and work it out. I kind of like the idea of the viewing tower in that then people along Route 46 are going to say, well, how do I get there? And then they'll, they'll discover the trail and they'll discover the Reservoir Tavern and downtown Booton and, you know, this can turn into an economic development uh, effort uh, to draw people into the Parsippany Booton area. Uh, did I finish? Wait, hold on. Yes, the, the one, one of the things I didn't mention along the West Shore, uh, a critical design feature that we needed to address was the eagle's nest that's, that's on the property. Um, there is a uh, nest that uh, is along the southwestern portion, and we've already talked to DEP and their, and their wildlife folks. We can run the trail near the nest. We, can, we have to route the trail as far from the nest as possible. And we're able to do that and still not impede the eagle uh, in, 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 in any capacity. Um, so there is enough of a buffer to do that. And in particular, there's enough pine tree buffer that really creates a visual for the eagles to not see the public. The, the biggest offenders to eagles, we've learned, are photographers. They, they are the ones that disturb eagles more than anything else. Vehicles don't bother. <laughs> our, our, e eagles are not bothered by vehicles. All that 287 traffic doesn't bother them at all. It's people being outside of a vehicle that disturbs them. 
So we just have to be careful and monitor that situation, particularly during their, their, their breeding uh, months. Okay, I think I finished. As to a timeline, I, I do have some paper handouts that, that give the timeline. Uh, we're, we're, we're on schedule as far as what we, we have planned. Uh, November of, of this year will be before the Jersey City Council. Tomorrow night we go before the Jersey City Environmental Commission, hoping to get their, their, uh, their seal of approval to recommend the project to the Jersey City Council. And uh, Jersey City Council will address it in November and December. And then, uh, then we're off to the next phase, which is engineering, design, and permitting. So that'll be all of 2020. And the, the hope being that phase one construction can start late 2020, early 2021. Really depends on how quickly we can get through DEP. Um, and that is it for now. And I'll, I'll sit down and uh, we'll stay around for questions that may come up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Council President, that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, at this time, Township Council, we're going to have a presentation by Bob Irocane and the Board of Adjustment. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear this? I'm used to being on that side. <laughs> uh, council President Kareefi, thank you for giving. Uh, I brought Bernie Berkowitz, who is one of our council members with us. We're going to give a, a brief overview of what we do because it seems back in January uh, there were some comments made about our rate of approval. And uh, we want we wanted to just go over some of the items and why we do what we do and tell you a little bit about our experiences. So. Um, you can take that mic off of there if you want. That makes it easier yeah. for you. you no, can. that's okay. okay. Um, first, first of all, um, as I said, Bernie's going to help me with this presentation. I want to. I want to give you a little background on Bernie for you guys that don't know know him that well. Um, Bernie has been a member of the zoning board and planning board dating back to the 1980s. Bernie's a retired attorney and former municipal judge. He also served as a planning board attorney in the 80s. Bernie will discuss some of the things we face as board members. Bernie? <laughs> uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, Jack, I'm going to read what I wanted to say so I make sure I cover everything. But as you all know, the Board of Adjustment is a quasi-judicial entity with the power by statute to interpret the zoning laws of uh, our municipality. Also, we're a body of voluntary citizens trying to accommodate our fellow citizens who live in town. The majority of our cases involve someone wanting to improve their property for the benefit of their neighborhood in addition to improving their own lifestyle and property. Minor hardships can be easily and properly averted by coming before the Board of Adjustment. Uh, most of the cases we hear are very minor uh, things that uh, are required almost as simple as uh, an air conditioner having to be placed on a piece of property. Uh, um, it is our job to help our fellow Percipity residents and make their living in our town less difficult. What we do by interpreting the zoning ordinances is to approve a variance when appropriate, <coughs> to modify the applicant's requests to be more in line with our town's zoning ordinances and overall appeal, and to deny the request when it is detrimental to the property, the neighborhood, and our town. Through our professional staff and hired experts, the board is well guided, as are the applicants. Many cases are not even filed or withdrawn after being reviewed before we even get to hear them. And still many more are modified during the hearing process. With the input of our board members, our experts, and our township officials, many citizens agree with what we have to say and amend their application. The final result then, then benefits not only the applicant, the applicant's neighbors and the township. We're a board made up of members with very diverse backgrounds that allows us to say yes when appropriate and no when appropriate. Uh, if any of you have any questions about how we you know, perform our task, I know Bob and I'd be happy to answer them. I'd also invite any of you to come to our meetings to see uh, how we operate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Bernie. Uh, by, by aside, Bernie and I have been friends since 1974 and been involved in many organizations and, and things. We go way back. Um, I'm going to address the report in a little bit. Comments made by Councilwoman Peterson and Council Vice President McCarthy back in January of this year indicated that the Zoning Board of Adjustment was the Board of Yes. How untrue this is. We take pride in our review of residential and commercial applications. We do our best to make decisions based on the facts of cases. Objectors are given ample time to ask questions and express their opinions. And as Bernie said, and all of this testimony is under oath. We're a quasi-judicial uh, entity. That means when an objector comes up, he, gets, he or she gets sworn in, states his name and address for the record, and then has an opportunity to express his uh, opinions or uh, questions or you know, comments on, on the application. We use our contracted <coughs> experts to help us with the technical requirements of the application. Why do we have such a high approval rate? It's inherent in the fact that many of our residential properties do not have conforming lot sizes due to the way the town was developed many years before zoning laws were introduced. Two family houses are not permitted in Parsippany. I found out today there are 58 two family houses in uh, Parsippany, some of which we are granted what's known as um, interpretation that the, they, these two family houses pre existed the zoning laws in this town. And I'll never forget the time we had um, an attorney from Lake Hiawatha by the name of Erwin Kanengeiser. And if he was still alive, he'd probably be 105 today. He came and personally testified to the, to the, the, the ev an evidence that this property had been a two family house back in the 40s. So those are the kind of things. We don't willy nilly grant two family houses. People come and want to put a two family house in. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. I'm sorry. Are you, there, I'm just, there is an approved list of, like I said, 58 houses. I just found that out later on. Lot sizes including 40 by 100, 50 by 100, and 60 by 100 zones create a number of variance applications. Lock coverages, setbacks, impervious coverage. Many of these applications are de minimis in nature. Generally, these are residents that are outgrowing their homes and want to stay in Parsippany. We have dealt with central air conditioning units within side yard setbacks that were found to be in the original c construction documents when the house was built. And no complaint was made, no, no question was made by the building department or the zoning department. People come to replace their air conditioner and they do the right thing, they come and get a permit. Come and get a permit, they're told their, their unit is, uh, is in a setback and need a variance. Can you deny that? The air conditioner's been here for 25 years, so. We have, re we have uh, residents who have removed underground fuel oil tanks and request a variance to put the new one above ground within the side yard setback. Um, again, they're taking a, a leaking tank out of the ground. There's no place for them to logically put it to, to service the, the furnace. It has to go in the side yard setback. We'll ask them if they talk to their next door neighbor. Does the next door neighbor have a problem with that? 99 out of 100 times, there's no problem. We grant the variance. Recently, we dealt with a variance request for a family that has special needs son. <coughs> they wanted to provide for their son and a caretaker within the current residence, creating what would appear to be a two-family house. But they make certain re there's certain restrictions. The unit is not blocked off, and they agree that that there's a deed restriction that this is not a two-family house. Again. They want the family wants to keep their son with them as opposed to putting them into a residential unit someplace else. And the child was, or the, the uh, son was very disruptive. And having him live in the main part of the house, he would get up in the middle of the night, wake up everybody. We granted the variance. It was a large house and it, and it made a lot of sense. We have a lot, we've had a lot of number, we've had a number of applications for family needs, elderly parents, special need children, and adults. You know, people that want to bring their parents to
to live with them, and they need a variance to make that work. As, as long as it's reasonable, we, you don't turn, we can't turn them down. I, I don't see how we can turn them. On the non-residential side, we deal with a number of use variance applications that encroach on residential area precipitating. We deal with these applications with sincere concerns about the impact on the residents of Parsippany. Recent applications for houses of worship have been scrutinized to make sure they fit in with the, the surrounding neighborhood. A recent application took over five years before it was approved because of extensive objections from the neighborhood. And we, we, listened, we listened to the neighbors and the applicant listened to the neighbors and made it, made it more um, conforming. Okay, this is my personal note. I know the timing of this report and the fact that it was introduced prior to my report was specifically aimed at me. For information, I met personally with Mayor Soriano a couple of weeks prior to this report being made public. He never said a word to me that there was a problem and that this would be brought up at the time of my appointment. Neither of the two councilwomen or the mayor made any attempt to discuss any of these issues with myself or any other board member prior to the report going public. I, tr I, try, uh, to, I try to run a good board, and I had a problem a few years ago, well, many years ago. Uh, the township planner was tasked with giving all of our um, use variances a hard time. At the time, I had a board attorney by the name of Stephen Hansbury. You might re remember him as, as uh, Morris County Judge Hansbury. I asked him if we could change planners. And I met John Chadwick, who knows more about zoning and planning and master plans in this town than any other person in this room and probably any other person in New Jersey because he wrote a lot of the master plans many years ago. He sits next to me and gives me great guidance. If there is an issue, I lean over to him and say, John, what's the story on this property? And he'll give you you know, almost chapter and verse of what happened. Um, I, I checked with Mike DePiro at the time, the late Jimmy Vigilante, and asked him if I could change planners, and they, and they concurred. And I brought John in, and John has been with me for, oh, I don't know how many years, at least 15 years. And a very, very important part of uh, the, uh, the zoning board. In the course of, of my meeting with, Ms. with Mayor Soriano, I told him about John Chow and that they were in the middle, midst of a, re, of a revision of the master plan. I said, talk to John. John knows this town. Never happened. People ask me why I still do this. There is no compensation, lots of aggravation. I'll go home at night after a Wednesday night of being here for two and a half hours. My wife have to put up with my anxiety, okay? And she keeps saying to me, why don't you quit? Why don't you quit? When I first joined the board in 1990, we had three meetings a month, except for August and November. They went from 7.30 to 11. And I'll never forget the night I was here at quarter to one, and I'll tell you how long ago it was, my beeper went off. Anybody have a beeper? <laughs> Anybody know, everybody knows what a beeper is, right? Okay. Um, it was my wife. She wanted to know where I was. She thought I had died on, on Route 46 coming home. <laughs> so it'd be interesting, and I want to introduce another person. My, uh, my zoning board secretary for 25 years. Were we together? How many years? She told me she would, she would retire the day I quit, so I'd be there. She retired. Um, she mentioned to me before, it'd be interesting to see what our approval rating is for the last 30 years. And I'm willing to bet, what do you think, Harry? What's that? What do you think the approval rating would be for the last 30 what years? I think the word? approval rating for the last 30 years. The approval rating? Uh, well, if you want to deny somebody a side yard setback because they don't have enough room to widen their driveway and it should be denied, then you're doing them a disservice. Most of the applications that we get are minor variances, an addition to a house, a generator in a rear yard or a front yard, an air conditioning unit. These are the type of applications that we get. 
These are small applications. And when you look, why don't you check back years before and see how many were approved by past presidents. Thank you, Harry. We had two other chairmen before him. We had a wonderful man by the name of, what was it, Colonel? Sorry. Dave Stivers. Dave Stivers. Who worked for Nabisco. He was chairman for many years. Barry Morell, an attorney, was chairman for many years. Hey, Mr. Ira King, All right. we have to stop that and we have to. Yeah, we got it. No, no, no. Okay. okay, she's good. She's good. All I wanted to do was tell her. <laughs> so, why do I stay? Um, it's in my blood, okay? I don't want to see something unfinished. And every year I look at this, at this board and I know there's stuff. Right now we're in the middle of a very contentious application for 7-Eleven. It's not going to finish this year the way it's going. They just carried the case and we, we don't even think it'll be on before January. And I, every time I have one of these cases that I want to, I want to see to, 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 the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the final stage, you know? So um, I'm 72 years old. I, God willing, I got three more years. That's probably it. That's probably it. But I've served uh, during the administration of seven mayors. Till now, I have never had any problems. I have been involved in community service and volunteering since 1974. 48-year-old 40 resident. I owned an accounting practice on North Beverly Road for 34 years. I was one of the ones that instigated the fall festival. Joe Weisberg, myself, Mimi Letts, and um, Barbara Ivoli. We formed that back in whatever year it was. And it, it was a tremendous success. Why was I so interested? I was interested in the businesses of North Beverwick Road. I wanted to see people come. And the first year, I heard we had the biggest one on uh, Sunday. No, it was last year. No, the first year. First year, you couldn't walk on North Beverwick Road. The intersection of Lakeshore Drive and, and, and Beverwick Road was, am I going too long? Yeah, well, I just want to. Okay. Well. I, I, what do we turn down? That's my final thing. What do we turn down? Tell me. What applications I, I, that we've talked about do we turn down? I just down? have a quick question for either one of you. If, um, you had said that there, there are a lot of applications come in and that you have discussions with them and, and I don't have makes, no, I mean, as far as suggestions into changing, making uh, adjustments, and then oh. a lot of the times the people do make yes, those adjustments. That's and then they, at right. The yes. R at the hearings. At the hearings. Right. So, uh, would you say it's a, it, there's a pretty large percentage of that that occurs with these, you know, with the uh, app? Or, or would you say there's a number of them that wouldn't be approved 15, unless the people made adjustments 15, during the hearing? Fifteen percent, maybe. Okay. A, a person wants a six-foot fence, and we knock them down to five. A person wants a four-foot setback or a two-foot setback on a shed, we make it four-foot. They want uh, the biggest concession, and I'll, I'll, I'll name it, is the Harry Krishna <coughs> Temple over on uh, uh, across the street from PAL? Their original plans were twice as big as what we approved. Twice as big. Right. So that's that's it. Okay. Does any? Well, I, have, I have one question for Mayor Soriano. Okay, and I'm not being a wise guy. You have a cop here tonight for safety, right? Usually yes. Okay. When I asked, when I had a cop at the Board of Adjustment meeting for the um, first. Um, 7-Eleven case, you asked me why I had a, f a cop there. Thank you very Do much. That was incorrect. If questions? I may answer that, the question was the cop is patrolling the building. You had the cop patrolling inside the room, which I felt was inappropriate was use of our hallway. police force. He was out in the hallway. Okay. No, not, the not when he was there. Well, and by the way, have, may, I don't uh, by the way, I did enjoy your presentation. Okay. I really appreciate that you came here and thank you. I'm glad you were able to keep your temper under control for this presentation, unlike last time. Do, do any, but I appreciate last, it. Last right. time it was uh -huh. very emotional because I got. I got. Do any any council members have any questions? No. Nope. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. I just have one question, Mr. President. Good. Um, so the the report that you just gave are are, 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 are these reports the board's annual <laughs> statutory report to governing body? Do you have any specific recommendations that? We, that we that have, governing body needs to take up. Mr. Irikin, I'm sorry. We have given reports many, many years, formal reports. They have not been done every year because we found that nothing was being done. And uh, 
Um, but I, I'm, in speaking to the, to the planning board um, planner, we have, we have now begun to inst instigate some of these changes. I think the um, air conditioner one has been, has right. been enacted. So you can go back through it. I'm sure if you talk, well, Nora's not here. I'm sure you so can get <coughs> copies of our old reports from Nora. Right, so we, we did make an effort to clean up some of the recommendations from both planning and zoning board this mm -hmm. year. We have another tranche that we're getting ready to do. I would encourage the board to continue to meet its statutory obligation, not only to report the number and types of variances, but also give the governing body a feel as to what um, <coughs> amendments to the done. zoning ordinance. Right, that's yeah. true, that's true. But in, in addition, what, what substantive amendments would the board like to see with respect to example, you know, some of the issues you identified with respect to the residential C variances that seem to be reoccurring. You're, you're not going to be able to legislate um, Lake Hiawatha. You have to look at every application individually because every application is unique. The air conditioners, the fences, and things like that, the oil tanks, those have been addressed. Mount, Mount, well, Mount Tabor. Right, well, Mount Tabor is another I mean, issue. Know, That's right. We have a big Mount Tabor application coming this week. Right. It's, uh, you know, they, they, have, they have houses that, that the steps are in the right of way. If there are two, two wooden right. steps fall down, they have to come for variance to put new steps up. Right, but you know, to, to the extent that the board sees commonality yeah. in, in the nature of variances, and we think that there's a way perhaps to craft an amendment to the zoning code to relieve the homeowner in most cases of the burden of having to appear at the board, we should take a look at those. I agree. I fully agree. I fully agree. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Township Attorney, Mr. Lott. Uh, at the last meeting, we had a question about um, the uh, proposed ordinances with or ordinance with respect to uh, pet shop sales. Um, so the er earlier ordinance that had been circulated and had discussed with council um, had taken a pretty simplified approach, uh, which would <coughs> prohibit the sale of cats and dogs in any um, commercial pet shop. It exempted. Um, animal care uh, and rescue organizations, shelters and pounds, et cetera. Um, subsequent to that discussion, there was another version of the ordinance that was um, submitted that has a much different um, regulatory approach, and uh, that would uh, allow the sale of cats and dogs uh, subject to about nine different conditions, perhaps ten different conditions. Um, so I did speak to Council Member Di Piero. Um, he suggested that I circulate um, the, the uh, ordinance that we had discussed last week to um, Animal Control, and I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. Thank you. So. Okay, Business Administrator, Mr. Kazmark. Um, thank you, Council President. Um, just want to introduce, oh, where'd she go? Oh, there you are. <laughs> you switched seats on me. Um, Susan Favate has a very brief presentation uh, for the Council tonight. Susan. I was told two minutes, and I'll, I'll try to hold to that. I know we have a full agenda. Um, I just wanted to give a very quick status update on some of the various planning initiatives, and it's kind of timely that Mr. Irokane was here, um, because we actually did have a meeting, uh, and Councilman DePiro was at that meeting as well, last, uh, last month, or August, I guess it was. Uh, very productive meeting uh, with several members of the planning board, talking about some common issues and, and better communication between the two boards. So that was that was a good meeting. But that was part of the master plan update, um, new master plan, and just a sense of where we are on that. Um, the planning board has an internal draft of the plan. Uh, we presented it to them last week, and they're reviewing it. We asked for a couple weeks for comments, and we're going to be refining it and, and making some changes. Um, targeting a public hearing date for November 18th. Um, and I think the plan is that we would come to this council at some point, either prior to that hearing or shortly thereafter, um, give you a briefing. Uh, we think that it's helpful uh, for you as a, as a board to have that, you know, that extra briefing. But that's where we are. Um, if we hold to the November 18th meeting, which there's every indication that we will, uh, I think the planning board will be on position to adopt on December 2nd, I believe, which is their next meeting after the hearing. Um, so good progress on that front. Um, I know there's been some questions about Highlands and the conformance petition. Um, we have been working with the Highlands Council. They required a scope of work. Um, and so we prepared that for them, worked with Keith on that a little bit, um, and sent that along to Highlands Council. They approved the scope, um, and they actually get, gave a $10,000 grant uh, for the effort. So we are underway with that, um, and that's that, we thought that was great news. No, no additional cost to the township. Uh, it's being funded by the Highlands Council. And um, our office is working on that effort as well. 
So um, I think it'll be done in the next two, three months at, at most. So that's where we stand on that. Um, and as Jim just mentioned, we have <coughs> been working um, with, with his office and with staff downstairs on um, some, a couple packages of zoning changes. Um, there, were, there were several issues that had been raised by staff uh, that, that were things that they were seeing, things that needed to be addressed, um, dealing with handicap ramps in the front yard, making sure that homeowners can do that, um, how to treat Airbnbs. That's something that is coming up and, and we need to address that. Uh, residential temporary dumpsters and storage units and driveways, things like that. So we've been working with Jim's office on that language and I think that's gonna be coming up uh, later in November as well. Um, so stay tuned to that. And then lastly, um, we, we have been working a little bit with Mayor Soriano on looking at hotels and motels in town and how they were permitted or not permitted, how they came to be, you know, trying to get a sense of the overall hotel stock and recognizing that some of it is not where I think we'd all like it to be. Um, and what can be done on that from a zoning perspective. So we've um, been working with staff, again, downstairs to try to uncover how these things came to be. And in many cases, it's been decades that they've been <laughs> in existence, so they predate zoning sometimes. Um, so we're looking at some options and we're gonna wrap that into the master plan as well. So the master plan will have some clear recommendations on hotels. So that's it, um, plus all the things that we deal with just week by week at the planning board, which remains pretty busy, so. Any questions? Any that questions for Susan? Thank three, you. That was three Thank minutes, you. maybe? There you Thank go. You <laughs> um, just two other items, Council President. Um, first, uh, yesterday and today, uh, our township engineer, Justin Liz, and I sat through 12 hours of community rating system training uh, provided by FEMA. Uh, we are trying to uh, reinstitute re the community rating system, which is essentially a point system with regard to flood mitigation efforts taken throughout the township that earn the township a series of points. Um, as you earn additional points, um, it has an effect on any residents who carry flood insurance. It reduces their premiums. Uh, so within the next few months, we will be back to council uh, to talk about the future of that program here in Parsippany. Um, and lastly, today's my one year anniversary here in Parsippany. Oh, congratulations. Um, I survived. <laughs> and I just want to thank uh, members of council and the administration, all of our department heads and employees and the residents uh, for your warm welcome here in Parsippany most days. Didn't you have a full and, head of hair um, when you got here? <laughs> I know the few. And um, I appreciate it and uh, look forward to uh, continuing to work together. Thank you. Township clerk, Mr. Madden. Uh, no report at this time, Council President. Thank you. Township offices, committees, reports? Anything? No, nothing. Okay, engineering report. Edgewood Court reconstruction project. Construction is substantially complete. The contractor is working with the sewer department on unforeseen issues with the sanitary sewer lateral repairs. Final paving will take place once the sanitary work has been completed. No action, uh, no council action required. 2019 road resurfacing curb and sidewalk program. All curb and sidewalk work is complete. Road milling and paving will continue until October. No council action required. Draining issues. Engineering and the Public Works Department are actively investigating numerous drainage issues. Groundwater is still high and is seeping through the asphalt roadway on Haddonfield Drive and Fernwood Place. We are installing under drain systems on these roads to collect the water and reduce icing problems in the winter. Other drainage issues are being investigated around Ashwood Place, Fox Hill Road, and the Lake Intervale area. No council action required. Community Rating System CRS program. We are currently working with the consultant at the NJDEP on getting back into the CRS program. This will provide discounts on flood insurance policies based on the level of activities in which the township participates. No council action required. Endorsement of the NJDOT local freight impact fund grant application. We are in the process of preparing and submitting a grant application through the NJDOT Local Freight Impact Fund. The fund is a competitive grant for transportation projects that addresses impacts of freight travel in local communities. Eligible applications must have a minimum of 10% large truck volume and access a warehouse distribution center. Our application is for the improvements to Jefferson Road from Persephone Road to Smith Road and includes drainage enhancements, roadway base course strengthening, minor widening at Persephone Road and surface course paving. The resolution endorsing the applications will need to be adopted by the Township Council. <coughs> Bids taken September 18th, Lake Hiawatha Water Main Replacement Phase 1. September 20th, Elevator Subcode Official to be taken. None. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to open up the public hearing. Motion. 
Second. Motion made by Ms. Peterson, seconded by Mr. DePiro. Roll call, Mr. DePiro. Yes. Ms. McCarthy. Yes. Ms. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Cariffi. Yes. Motion passes. The floor is open to the public on any matter. Okay, if you do come up, please state your name and address. You'll be given five minutes. Kandalski, 21 Winfield Drive. I have two questions on resolutions that I see, one in the non-consent agenda and the other in the consent agenda. So if you want, I'll read all my questions on both and then sure. you can answer. So the first is on resolution uh, 2019-191, uh, resolution of intent to appropriate funds or bonds for affordable housing in the event of a funding shortfall. So my questions are, what are these funds for? How much risk is involved with appropriating these funds or bonds in the event of a funding shortfall? <coughs> what is our maximum exposure, and is there a mechanism for recouping this money? Uh, the second has to do with uh, resolution on the um, consent agenda. There's several that provide for the insertion of any special item of revenue in the budget of any county or municipality what's behind these resolutions, what problem or issue are they solving, can this revenue be a negative, can in other words, you know, could this result in losses? So those are my questions on the resolutions. I can I answer them. I can answer the one on the revenue side. I'm, I'm not able to answer the other one on the, cons on, the not on the consent agenda. What that is is grants. And as we get grants, they need to be put into the budget. So what they call a special item of revenue. It was not anticipated when we passed the budget. So as we get grants, 